say hi. <laughs> All right, Kenny, get out of here. Don't you come back attacking me. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have a lot of great things for us to take a look at today. If you're new here, my name is Tori and I have fun rating things according to my own made up rating scale. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a couple more holiday songs but we are blessed because in today's video, we are going to have some live piano footage of these holiday classics. My lovely aunt graciously agreed to help us perform these holiday classics on the piano. And she let me film all the different snippets for us to take a look at and analyze just like we did last time. And then of course, ultimately, we will be putting them into a category according to the rating scale. We just thought it would be really fun to collaborate on this and bring a little bit more holiday spirit to all of your news feeds. Also, before we get started, I know that we're heading into the middle of December, and I know that a lot of us, not naming any names, definitely sometimes myself, are still shopping for Christmas gifts. And I, have decided to link a couple of my favorite holiday gifts for 2021. If you like my channel and you want to help support this, please feel free to check out those links. If you purchase anything, it will help to support me. But back to the video. Let's talk about the rating scale for this video. Last time, we decided to rate all the songs between classy or classy. This time, we are going to have five different categories that we place these songs into. So we are still going to listen to the songs, we're still going to analyze them just a little bit, and then we're going to place them into one of these five categories. So I know I've been building up the suspense, let's take a look at these five categories. At the bottom of our list, we have Holiday Duds. All right, let's talk about this. These are going to be the songs that you might hear at the mall, in a janky department store, while you're shopping last minute for your holiday gifts. These might be the songs that you listen to on the radio or that you accidentally hear whenever you click radio instead of connecting your Bluetooth. Let's be honest, nobody really listens to the radio anymore, right? These are the songs, at all costs, if you can, you will skip them. But we had to include them in here because they're still holiday classics and well, they're still always going to be around. Next on the scale, we have ye old holiday scores. These are going to be our songs that, well, they're very traditional and were probably created centuries ago. They do still exist and sometimes they're still played at places like church, but you're not really going to hear them at your holiday gatherings. You're probably not going to find them on your friend's playlist because if they even know these songs, it's it's a gamble. Okay, our third category is Boomer Jams. These are songs that your parents and maybe your grandparents are really into or they were really into as children. These are songs that you might still hear on the radio, but you're probably not very excited to hear them. You will probably decorate your tree to them. You'll definitely have them on in the background at your holiday party. And you probably know all the words, but again, they don't really spark that much excitement. For your grandparents, on the other hand, they might really like these songs. The next category is Eggnog Required. These are going to be the songs that you really do enjoy. After you've had a little bit of eggnog, if you know what I mean. You're probably going to wait until the end of the night to actually listen to these songs. You might actually dance to them. After you've had some spiked eggnog. But until then, they're just run-of-the-mill holiday songs. You'll put them on, you'll decorate to them, but you're not going to get crazy until you've had some of that eggnog. And finally, our fifth category is holiday bangers. These are going to be the songs that you are always waiting to hear each holiday season. You're going to hear these at the bar. You're definitely going to sing along to these with your family. You're probably going to decorate and even dance around to these songs. We are going to listen to all types of songs today, all played on the piano, and then we're going to categorize them in one of these five holiday categories. Okay, let's get into it. 
Song number one is Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy from an 1892 ballet, The Nutcracker. Let's listen. <laughs> That was composed by Tchaikovsky and is a great traditional holiday song, holiday ballet. Um, definitely saw it a couple of times, I believe, when I was younger. This is a song that a lot of the older generations definitely know. They were probably very into. I know my babysitter was into it when I was a little kid. My mom knows it. My grandparents probably really liked it. It might come on while I'm cooking or making my hot cocoa, but I'm not going to request this and it's definitely not going to be on at the bar. So because of all of that, we are going to rate this as a boomer jam. Okay, so the last song was a boomer jam. Maybe you're not too happy about it, but we have to let the ratings flow. So the next song is Carol of the Bells. This song is by Leontovich, I think is how you pronounce it, from 1914. definitely has a little bit of a different beat from the first song. There have definitely been a lot of remixes of this song. I've heard it play at the bars. I've heard it on my friend's playlist. I've listened to it. It comes on on the radio. It comes on while you're shopping. It is a great song to add to any playlist. However, I'm probably not going to request this song. Until I've had a bit of eggnog. Once you really are in the mood to listen to this song, it becomes a little bit more of a jam, but until then, you'll need to pour some eggnog. Moving on to the next song, we have A Holly Jolly Christmas, which was written by John Marks in 1964. Let's take a listen. <laughs> I feel like most people know the words. You're always going to listen to it at your Christmas parties. It's always going to come on whenever you're at the bar. And it really just gets everybody into the holiday spirit. That being said, I would still have to rate this as an eggnog required category. Because I'm still not bumping to this in my car. I'm not really dancing to this whenever it first comes on. I might sing along to it and we'll definitely be singing it at the holiday party, but it would definitely be a great song to save for later in the night after everyone's had a little bit more eggnog. Okay, the next song I think we should listen to and see if we know it before we talk about it. If I had just heard this on the piano and there were no lyrics, I'm not sure if I would have remembered the name to this song. This is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. This song is an old English carol from 1739, so I bet you can see where we're going to be categorizing this. This was made famous by Mendelssohn, and it is a great song traditionally, you know, really getting back into the spirit of Christmas, keeping things classic. But overall, this is just a ye old holiday score. Okay, we're not going to be doing shots of eggnog to this. We're not going to hang out in the bar and listen to this. This is really just meant for background music, maybe, while you're serving your Christmas dinner. And it's something that's nice to have as a traditional song, but we're really not doing much with this. Okay, now unlike the last song, this song is a little bit more upbeat. This song is going to be Jingle Bell Rock. Can you tell how much more modern this is? It was released by James Booth and Joseph Beale in 1957. A lot of years in between those two songs. And this one is definitely one you're always going to have on. It's 
always on the radio, you're always putting it in your playlist, your friends have it in their playlist, your parents like it, your grandparents like it, you're going to dance around to it, you know all the words, it's even in popular movies, everybody knows this song. So, because of that, this is an absolute holiday banger. This does not require any eggnog, although that will definitely make it more fun. But this is a song that you can throw on anytime throughout the holiday season and really get up and dance, enjoy it, do all your decorating and shopping to it. All right, moving on, we have another pretty old song. I think again, we should take a listen to this one before I announce the name. <laughs> I saw three ships, and this is from 1833. The earliest print was from the 17th century. This is definitely not something that I'm playing during any part of the holiday season. And because of that, we're going to have to rank this right next to Hark the Herald Angels Sing at ye old holiday score. Okay, now that we're done with the 17th century, we're gonna move on to Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. <sighs> I am so tired of hearing this song. I mean, I guess I get why it's popular. It is an okay song. I found out this song was actually released in July by Joel Stein, and the artist was actually in California just wishing for cooler weather. I don't know who is going about their day creating a Christmas song in the middle of the summer. I understand that Christmas in July is a whole thing, but... I just think this song is so overplayed. Let's take a listen to it, and then I'll let you know what I'm going to categorize it as. Were you rolling your eyes as much as I was having to listen to that? Are you also tired of it? I'm not saying it's not a good song, I just don't really want to listen to it. I know that the older generations like it, so because of that, we are going to categorize it as a, a boomer jam because it's definitely played on the radio every year. It is in all of those playlists, but I'm not listening to it. If I can, I'll probably skip it, but it's not bad enough to be a dud. Speaking of songs, I would like to skip. was a poem written in French originally in 1843 and then later composed into a song in 1847. I would just like to forget about this song. This is definitely a church song. I don't want this anywhere near my holiday party. I don't want to listen to it. It's just a downer. And because of that, we are going to categorize this as a holiday dud. Okay, we have two more songs, and I just want to say I am so thankful that my aunt is sitting through to play all of these for us, because... If we don't even want to listen to them, I doubt that she's enjoying playing them. Anywho, on to number nine. We have Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, which of course was written by Johnny Marks, sung by Brenda Lee, much more modern. This song is from 1957. Let's listen. cat and I even danced to this song. I learned this song had the fourth most digital downloads for Christmas songs, which I think is pretty impressive. It's definitely more modern than a lot of the other songs on this list, and I think that's pretty obvious whenever we listen to things like the lyrics and how quickly this song is moving from beat to beat. And because of all that, I definitely know that people are listening to this in the bars, they are drinking eggnog to it all night long, and this is an absolute holiday banger. Okay, we are down to our last song, and I had to include this on this list because this is one of the biggest caroling songs there is. This was one of the best songs that my family enjoyed singing every single year. It got louder as the night went on. It got louder the more times we sang it. It got louder every time we had more eggnog. This is the 12 days of Christmas. Honestly, sometimes I'm surprised
realize this song is from 1780. It was released as a song that we know today, a little bit later in 1909, but still, it just seems like it should be more modern than that. I had my aunt play the fifth day of the 12 days of Christmas because it's just the most notable and it's the one that everyone enjoys the most because it's the loudest, it's the rowdiest, and the more eggnog you have, the better it is every time you get around to it. This one was tough. I had to choose between a banger and eggnog required. I think ultimately I came down to deciding to categorize this as eggnog required. Although I kind of want to drop off the required part of that because I don't think the eggnog is required, but I do think the influence of eggnog really helps with this song. It gets everybody more excited, more lively, more into the spirit, ready to belt out each of those 12 days of Christmas over and over and over again. And I think that it's one of those songs that people do have on repeat and the more eggnog they have, the more they're interested in singing it. So that is it. We have all of our songs and I am going to list them here for you. We had a great time filming this for everybody. And again, if you enjoyed this, please support my channel by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, take a look at the different merch I put down in the description box for you. Again, if you decide that you want to buy any of those, you will be supporting my channel. And that is all we have this time. See you in the next one. Bye! Sorry, I have no idea what that was about.